Hello, I'm Joel Blackford with Beth Hassett Sabbath Fellowship. We are virtual only based out of St. Paul, Minnesota. The phone number does work. We do the philosophy of eschatology, the, what you need to know, your reality, our existence. We cover more prophecy than other people. I don't do the news. John Haller does a great job on the news, and I recommend him all the time. We solve a little piece of revelation that's going to be the third seal, the third horseman this week, where we deal with that and trying to solve a little bit more. What we're dealing with is the fact that Back in 2012, we had a prophecy dealing with the third seal, the third horseman, and it was related to Halloween. I'll explain it when we get to the slide, but it was related to Jeroboam's false Sukkot. Now, I know my Bible, but back in 2012, I didn't understand the relationship. I didn't get it. And so we'll discuss that today. We'll discuss a little bit of the third seal. We'll discuss Jeroboam first, which is that we have King David, and the kingdom was supposed to be divided then. And we have Solomon, his son. Then Solomon's son was Rehoboam. And that was down in Judah. But up north, we had Jeroboam. And, and the kingdom was divided between Judah and Israel up north. And Jeroboam was the leader. He was not a son of David. Sounds like it, but he wasn't. And he didn't want to go down to Judah for the proper Sukkot. So he set up a false Sukkot in 1 Kings 12 that was where he changed the priesthood, made a priest of all the tribes. Jeroboam sacrificed and burned incense upon the altar at Bethel, not, not in Jerusalem, not on the Temple Mount. And then he changed the date of the feast. Sukkot, he turned it into a month later. And I have friends that are nice, dear, sweet friends, and I'll mention them in the next slide, that are keeping Sukkot this month. And this is the false Sukkot. You don't want to do that. So that's Jeroboam, and, and he was wicked, very, very wicked. And he lasted about 22 years, I think, as a ruler. So now this is from Deborah's Day Tree. She is a month off. She has celebrated Sukkot right now, and this is the false Sukkot time frame. And it's too bad because she's smart. She's one of my sources for checking out the new moon each month. But in this case, she's wrong. And part of it is that she likes to get attention. So anyway, um, Psalm 81, 3 through 4 says, Sound the shofar at Rosh Kodesh and at the full moon for the pilgrim feast, because this is the Torah, basically, for Israel, a ruling of God from Yaakov. Okay, so um, the new moon was sighted Monday on the 16th of October, which means that everything's a day or so forward here. And, and so that's kind of interesting, meaning that on our calendar, Halloween is going to be the fall Sukkot starting. So as I mentioned, this occurred back in 2012. And I'll show you in those slides. This is a quick video, so stick with it. I'll show you those slides, how it matches up. But I'm saying watch Halloween this year. I'm thinking that this could be interesting because the last time this occurred, we had Hurricane Sandy, we had the snowstorms, we had flooding in Wall Street, we had all sorts of things. And Wall Street is tanking already. So let's go through it. I'm not making a prophecy. I'm just saying watch the next week or so here um, as we start out with the fall Sukkot. And that would be starting on Halloween evening. OK, and you just saw the full moon last night. I'll see it again tonight, hopefully. And it's fairly clear tonight. We'll see. Uh, so we try not to twist the Bible. We try to give you accurate prophecy. And I'm not predicting a crash this week, but it could happen, although it's been due for 13 years, people, too. Keep that in mind. So we have lots of things going on right now. We have the war between Israel and Gaza, and other countries seem to be getting involved. Um, so Israel is saying their war cabinet is confirming that the second stage of war has begun. That's from all Israel news. And uh, that's the 29th of October. That is today. Uh, Turkey quietly celebrates 100-year anniversary as a republic. And Erdogan said um, he accused Israel of being war criminals and that there was a vicious massacre happening in Gaza. And also another article that was cited by Joel Rosenberg uh, cites that Erdogan is threatening war. So we'll see. He's part of NATO. Why is he in NATO? Why would you want a guy like that in NATO? I don't get that. So once again, we're talking about Jeroboam's false Sukkot sign. Um, now, I'm not claiming that October 29th of 1929 was the uh, 15th day of uh, Cheshvan back in 5690. No, it was 25 Tishri, but that's when it crashed on the 29th of October. Rather late in the month, 
And so we're coming up on the 30th and the 31st, uh, Monday and Tuesday, and we'll see what happens. And that's Halloween day too. And the market, I'll show you, uh, you know, on the, on the right-hand side here, you can see um, that was 1929, how it crashed. And it really didn't come back until about 1938. And then it crashed again. Um, Roosevelt really didn't help. What brought us out of that depression until 1929 through 1940 was the war. <laughs> the war, build up for the war and spending money. Uh, Wall Street crash. So once again, that was that black, um, oh goodness, was it Black Thursday? Yeah, in America. Yep. Um, and so in uh, basically, I'm saying that it shows up as 16 Heshvan uh, for the October 31st, Halloween, but it should be 15 based on Deborah's day trade and citing the new moon. So it's just interesting to note that, and it's part of this prophecy, and we'll show you the prophecy in just a minute. So this is from Ernest Hemingway. The first panacea of mismanaged nation is inflation of the currency. The second is war. We're seeing both right now. Both bring a temporary prosperity. Both bring a permanent ruin, and both are the refuge of political and economic scoundrels opportunists thank you mr hemingway so the bond market is crashing already uh we're talking about potential oil wars financial wars we're talking about iran possibly jumping in i still believe and i'll stick with this that and i'll show you the video hopefully in a couple of weeks here i've got the sources pretty much laid out where all of the sources that i like <laughs> that's my problem they're the people that i like but they're good people wilkerson dudeman uh groover um, um, this Norwegian lady from 1968 and some other sources all say it seems like Gog Magog happens at the end. So there could be other skirmishes in the meantime, but really you'll notice other things occurring in the meantime. So um, the market, it's dropping and it was dropping all last week and, and it could be dropping this week again. So we'll see. The debt clock is just going crazy. And I, so I pulled that up and snipped it real quick. And then down below here is the hockey stick of overall debt. Uh, you can just see this is a better picture than the debt clock itself. It literally shows it going up the right hand side here in 2023 uh, to $33.17 trillion. And that's just the stuff that we know of. Um, so anyway, keep in mind with a hockey stick situation. And I've lived through, well, I wasn't born in 1922 or 1942, but I remember 1982 quite well. I was right out of college. And then the debt kicked off after that. And Reagan, you know, was supposed to be a fiscal conservative, but Tip O'Neill wanted to spend the money. And Reagan said, okay, fine. And they thought that they would pull themselves, but they did. But that was a lot of money to spend to pull yourselves out of that kind of a recession from the Carter years. So another factor that I want you to be aware of is that our ozone layer, our magnetosphere is thinning and we are in solar cycle 25 and we are going to peak very shortly here from 2024 to 2025. And it looks like it'll be greater than we expected. So if our ozone layer is thinner and the solar activity should be a maximum coming up here, that means you're going to see some aurora borealis and you might see some earthquakes and things like that. So um, this is from Ben Davidson, most of this information that you should expect some huge results from this. You'll see the aurora even in lower climates. So be aware, you'll have more earthquakes, you'll have more auroras, you'll have more incredible storms that will frighten you and come out of no place. So that's another factor, okay? And Wall Street is ready for the dooms doomsday playbook too. So keep in mind that if it doesn't happen this year, it could happen next year, they're ready to go. They've already planned it all out. And so they know what's going on. So getting back to the prophecy part of this, back in 2012, I was finishing my book. Don't read my book. Don't buy my book. Okay. If I ever change it out again, we'll talk about it. But anyway, so a young man named Chris showed up at our place, our shul in Hudson, Wisconsin. And he said, I have a message for the pastor and the elders. So I said, tell me. And uh, I became a pastor. And maybe in some ways I already was. I was already running a Bible study as a pastor. So I guess it didn't matter. The message was there will be a catastrophic storm this fall after Sukkot, but before the end of October. The sign of the storm will be snow and a broom. After prodding, he also stated the third seal opened this summer of 2012. Okay, I needed a second witness. I had a friend that was also running the Bible study with me. And he said, Joel, you need to read 1 Kings 12, how Jeroboam created a false Sukkot. And um, 
at, at that particular year, it started on Halloween. So it started before the end of October, and then it kicked off a horrible hurricane uh, into Wall Street and New Jersey and those sections. And then it also uh, coincided with the election, the divided election. And so it was a lot like Jeroboam and Rehoboam, you know, the two kings. Uh, you've got... Uh, uh, Rehoboam and Judah and Jeroboam and Israel. And on the eighth day, there was this little storm. And so God hates these false festivals like Halloween. So please don't celebrate Halloween. Please don't. So keep in mind, the third seal is once again where you uh, have horrible inflation. And we're experiencing that right now. I mean, inflation is just through the roof. So keep in mind the, the words at the bottom here. Well, actually, I'll show you the next slide. It's inflation, it's people going hungry. And the next slide states it better. When he opened the, the Chotam slash Shlishi, uh, Shlishi, the third seal, he heard uh, the, the living beings uh, saying, come and see. And I saw, and Hine, uh, he saw a black horse and the one sitting on it had a pair of scales that denotes judgment based on Zechariah 6, 2. And I heard as it were a voice in the midst of the Arba, which would be the four coyote, the living being, saying, a quart of wheat for Daenerys and a shlosha of quarts of barley for Daenerys for the poor, okay? The poor people will notice this. When you pay a day's wages to eat, you notice it. But the shemen, the oil, well, that's for wealthy people. And the yayin, the wine, that's for the wealthy again. You may not harm. Now, that word in the Greek is adikesis, and that would be H5771, which is avonim, which is in this context, it would be low avanim. Don't willfully sin against the poor people. That's Revelation 6, 5 through 6. So keep that in mind. That's the third seal. And what's occurring is the poor people are coming in. And we're saying, well, we're not going to take care of you. And when we turn around and we're poor and they know how to live off the land, they're not going to help us. So keep that in mind. Okay. So watch out. Watch Halloween for 2023 uh, for a false Sukkot sign and things like that. And, and keep in mind that these things are all connected. Ben says the rise of the trans culture, the wars, the threats of wars, economic strife, climate change discourse, cancel culture, censorship, satanic symbolism everywhere, Earth's magnetic pole shift. They're all interconnected into what's going on. And, and so this is all solar. It's all, it's affecting human beings. It's affecting their minds and they're making poor decisions. So um, it's a polycrisis, according to Neil Ferguson and uh, Orwell. The war was not meant to be won. It was meant to be continuous. Hierarchical society is only possible on the basis of poverty and ignorance. In principle, the war effort is always planned to keep society on the brink of starvation. Yeah, that's Orwell, 1984. So expect more Skirmishes, that is something from Matthew 24 called ethnos, epi, epi, ethnos, which is ethnic groups fighting. Wars may occur. That would be Basileia, Epi Basileia, that's kingdom versus kingdom. Maybe a few nukes, you never know, um, but, but not World War III. It's not going to happen until the end. I'll show you that video soon, okay? Um, World War III is going to happen in seven to nine years from now. OK, um, it, it's possible that markets will be more volatile this week. We'll see. Two billion should die and or not be born. Uh, the blood moon eclipse, if it appears alongside a micronova, means we're in the sixth seal. And then, then you would be following. You would notice the following years would bring cosmic disasters for two and a half years. Um, the world would crave a messiah. Obama would step forward. Another person would step forward. You'll have some extra dimensional people involved. It's there in Revelation chapter 9. Pope Fan Francis will be involved in this or another pope, but I'm assuming it's Francis. He's so old. And then there will be a second exodus. So expect Jews to run into frightful conditions in the rest of the world and be safe in Israel. So believe it or not, things are going to go well there. So we're in the birth pangs. We're probably in the fourth, fourth seal. We're not in the tribulation. We're not in the great tribulation. We're years away from it, potentially. We are talking about the false Sukkot. We're talking about you don't celebrate Halloween. Don't be involved in the false Sukkot. Observe it. Be aware of it. You need your garments to be clean. You need other loved ones' garments to be clean. It's a wedding, people. You can't be naked. You have to have clean garments. And that's that. Thank you very much for your time. Hopefully next week. God bless. Bye.